Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Penford Sports, the NFL show. I am here, your host, as always, Adam Malachuk, along with the honorable, the beautiful, the legendary Austin. Chris Raheli and Austin. Oh, that is right. We have Chris on for the whole show tonight. Why? Um, because he knows a lot more about football than I do. So that's why we have Chris on for tonight. But honestly, let me introduce our co-host. Thanks, Adam. Austin Riley. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Yeah. It's my first time. Jokes are that Austin is going to be uh, replaced by his brother. So we'll let you know what happens with that. All right. Well. Welcome to the show, everybody. Welcome to the show, Chris. How you doing tonight? Doing good, guys. Thanks for the invite. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure. So let's get into uh, the scores. Let's get into the scores. So week five, it started off on Thursday night with the most boring game. <laughs> no one even scored a touchdown. It was, field goals. it was so bad. All field goals. I was at Austin's house watching it with him. And I left, what, yeah. before halftime? Before halftime. I was like, this is a waste of time. And I was right. Um, Chris, what did you think of that game? Well, for the folks out there, if you get aroused by uh, field goals and interceptions, this is your game to watch. <laughs> That's a very, very <laughs> valid point. <laughs> Terrible game. Um, then we had, let's see here, Sunday. My team, the New York Football Giants. What? 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 What did they do to the Aaron Rodgers and the Packers? What did they do? What did they, they do? Them. They stomped them in London. Look at that, bruv. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Everybody wants to call the Giants a flop team. Everybody wants to say they ain't great. Well, guess what? I got other things in mind. The Giants are full and won. And they secured that record in London. Ain't that right, Austin? Yeah, that's right. A lot of people, you know, when I talk to them and they're like, oh, the Giants actually won today. And I'm saying, yeah, the Giants won. They seem surprised. Yeah, it's annoying to me. Like, I, I think that people are just underestimating the Giants. It's annoying to me because it's like, dude, like literally, the Giants are a good team. Like there's no doubt about that in my mind. They have rallied in the fourth quarter in every game. That's what the Giants are doing this year. They have the best running offense in the NFL currently. So how are you going to act like when they have that standing – in the NFL, and when they're four and one, like you're going to be surprised when they win. It's not like I think instance, that people are just surprised because. And I'm going to tell you the masterminds behind that: Wink Martindale and Brian Dabble. Brian Dabble is an incredible head coach. He really like I couldn't agree with you more, Chris. Like he really fires the team up, which is something you haven't seen from the Giants, like a Giants coach in a long time. And it's exciting as a fan because he cares. Like, to be honest, like you watch like a uh, like an old Giants coach walk out looking defeated when they lose a game. Like Dable will Tom go in Coughlin. there. Old, yeah. old Tom Coughlin. Yep. Yeah, but like he'll go in there and he'll like still fire the team up. He'll be like, "Listen, we didn't win this one, but you guys played your heart out." We're going to go back at it next week, and we're going to win the game. And nobody has fired up the Giants team like this for a long time. And it's exciting to watch as a Giants fan. It's exciting to see a coach that you feel like actually has a passion for the team and actually wants to see the team do better. So that's exciting for me to watch. So I'm really excited about that. So you can't count the Giants out. They're good. And I just, back to what I was saying. Um, I think just people are surprised because they haven't been nothing since what, two thousand nine when they beat the Patriots. Yeah, I mean, because, 
Yeah. No, and it's it's but after after they won, when when they were three and one, you should have stopped being surprised. Right. And so it is still early too, but they are looking a lot better than they we yeah, we do. just didn't know what what was gonna come of that offense because of the receiving core, how injury prone they are, right? You know how unexperienced they are, so that's why a lot of people were looking at the Giants as a fluke. Yeah, you know? Sh- Shepard so. was out till what week four? Well, Shepard's back out, right? He, 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 yeah, but it doesn't he matter the because they no, they got it done without Chris's him. point, Christopher's point. That because of the wide receiver, the injury prone, and but they yeah. but that's what's great about the Giants that I've noticed this year. Yeah, their wide receiver was out. So what did they do? They ran the dang ball, and that's all they've been I'm doing. Heavy. Like yep. their quarterback runs the ball. They obviously have Saquon, who is just an absolute dominant running back right now. Like it's just it's unreal, and I'm excited as a Giants. I fan. know you were scared when. He went to half when he, he went to the locker room. He's in the running for MVP, no pun intended. Boy, was I scared. Was I scared. Moving on to the next game. You boys are <laughs> so happy about this. And I know this one's kind of an upset. It's kind of an upset alert because the Lions have the highest. They're the highest scoring team this year. Right. Wins or lose, Number they're one. the highest scoring Number team. One scoring offense, yeah. But the Patriots beat them. 29 to 0. The highest scoring offense got stopped. You know what it was? The jerseys. It that's it what was I was the gonna uniforms. Say. It was the the field. I don't know, man. It was different. It was that Deion Sanders motto, look good, play good. Look good, play that's good. That's right. Look good, feel good, you know? So the <laughs> Patriots beat the Lions 29 to 0. Chargers and Browns. A lot closer game than I thought it was going to be. And the Chargers beat the Browns 30 to 28. Austin Eckler had a big um, Yeah, Austin big Eckler game. Austin Eckler came in clutch for you, eh? Oh yeah. 235 points against my brother here. And that led to the conquest and victory and blowout that you had over him. What was the final point? Scoring between you two. Let me look it up. Fourteen. It was fourteen hundred and nine hundred. Wow. Yeah. Good job, I had, Austin. I had, I had four guys injured, Oof. so it didn't do me any justice at all. Just was not a good week for me in fantasy whatsoever. I, I you wish know, I had for, it written down. Like that, uh, like we like uh, we said. Uh, yeah, and like we said in our group chat, sometimes God gives grace to the weak. Yeah. He gave favor to you, Austin. By the time he showed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then we had the Texans and the Jaguars. The Texans beat the Jaguars. I, Texans are going to be nice. That was another sleeper game. That was yeah. going to sleep. Yeah. Um, lots of naps, honestly, in week five. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the Buccaneers and the Falcons, where there was one of the most controversial calls I have ever seen in my life. A roughing the passer. This, so let's take this one away. Yeah, roughing the passer on Tom Brady. Let me ask you this, Chris, because I know you have the same thoughts I do. Did that anything, anything in that whole play look anything to you like a roughing the passer? There, you no, know, that that wasn't a rough in the passer at all. That was actually a sack. That's what mm-hmm. you call that. You, you call it a sack. Yeah, and what was interesting to me is, I could understand maybe if they called a roughing the passer if he went at him and fell on top of him, but it was honestly the opposite. He went to the ground first, and then Brady like rolled over because the guy's arms were around him. I but, think it just it just goes all to. This this day and age where you can't touch the quarterback, can't touch the punter without getting. Well, it's not necessarily you can't touch the quarterback as much as you can't touch Brady. Let's be honest. Let's call it what it is. Like, no, no, this no, whole, no, no, this whole no, 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 no. Let's let's call no, it what no, no, it is. No. Let's call it what it is. It's not about 
roughing the passer or or you can't touch the quarterback. It's you can't touch Brady. That's what it is. No. It's been that way it, for a long time. It's not to be just honest. Brady. It's definitely not just Brady. If that was any other team, if that was Chargers and Browns, that would not have been a roughing the passer call. The I NFL have has. Quote. I have a quote here. Go ahead. I have a quote here from Jerome Boger, who who made that call. He said, "Quote unquote, I have." Um, the defender grabbed the quarterback while he was in the pocket and unnecessarily throwing him to the ground. Necessarily? What do you mean unnecessarily? That is, that is quote unquote from Jerome Boger. Uh, the quarterback the had grabbed the, the ball, while he was and so the, the defender took him to the ground. It's called right. a unnecessarily, sack. unnecessarily throwing him to the ground. No, yep. no, it was a hundred percent necessary because he had the ball. Absolutely, yeah. It and t- you know, and if anyone's got something to say about this, you already know it's going to be Rod Woodson. First, it was the the tuck rule. Now this. Right. It's a it's a it's a bunch of malarkey, honestly. Tom Brady, how are you feeling? <laughs> yeah. Then we had the Bills. They showed up in true Josh Allen of, fashion. There's a lot of blowouts and close games in this week. 38 to four, 3. 38 to 3. Four, four touchdowns and one interception with a QBR rating of 134.1, man. He's dominant. I actually, so there's a sandwich shop in Albany where I work. Yep. And I was going through their menu today for lunch. And one of the sandwiches is called the Josh Allen. Really? <laughs> so, yeah. What? I thought that was, I thought I had to mention. He got his own I sub line. I didn't end up getting it. And here's why. It was like a, um, uh, what do you call it? It wasn't, it was, it had no meat on it. It was a sandwich with like, why can't I think of the term? So it's like. Um, had all veggies. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. But it was like, it's a, it's a dish. I can't think of the name. It's like an Italian, like appetizer typically where it's tomato, fresh mozzarella, like in a balsamic glaze. I can't think of what it's called. But no meat. Yeah, that was it. Was that on a ciabatta I, I roll? I wouldn't get it either. It's probably good, but I would add chicken to it. Like there's chicken on it. Yeah, but yeah, the Jets oh. absolutely upset. destroyed the Dolphins. Zach Big Wilson, upset. he showed up, and um, rumor has it Zach Wilson is also in Giselle's DMs, fighting the fight with me. <laughs> <laughs> but is Zach Wilson the host of the greatest NFL podcast on the internet? No, definitely not. No, and who is? I don't think so. Me. That's right. Get out of here, Zach. Talk, but the problem is I don't I don't know if Giselle wants another quarterback. What she would like is someone that talks smack about her ex. And I already did that today. Hey. And I've already done that. And I can do that every the whole, week. The whole world's talking about it. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's honestly kind of sad. Like she really like she let like honestly, like I understand like there were a couple things, but this is was this was his career. Right. This she, is she what just got wasn't... them to get let's be honest. This is what got them together in the first place. Like had had he graduated the University of Michigan, never went into the NFL got a job at like a stockbroking agency. He never would have met her right. because he wasn't yeah. at the status. So how can you blame the thing that brought you two together as the reason for your divorce? It's like, it's kind of hypocritical. Right. Yeah. Who's to say if Bledsoe didn't take them to the Super Bowl that year, she wouldn't have married Bledsoe. Right. Right. Is she? Yeah. She's uh-huh. not with some subpar quarterback. You don't see her and yeah. Jay Cutler. <laughs> You don't see her and Imagine. Andrew Luck. She wasn't car she, salesman. She wasn't. Let's be. Let, wait, 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 wait. Let's be honest. All the ladies love Jay Cutler. 
<laughs> yeah, but not because he's a good quarterback. <laughs> no, it's because his looks. All I'm saying is he's, he's a horrible quarterback. She wasn't going after Matt Ryan. You know what I'm saying? Like, she was with Brady because he was successful in his field, because he was in a position in his field where he was even in the in the slight chance to even meet her. Like, I, I just think it's hypocritical. But yeah. regardless, I'm in her DMs. Regardless, Brady is the best quarterback of all time. Well, yeah, no, 100%. But if it means Sorry. me and Giselle have a healthy relationship, I will talk smack about him. Even if you did, I, <laughs> I don't think you could talk. <laughs> you can't. There's not much yeah. to talk smack about. No. Bears and Vikings. The Vikings beat the Bears 29 to 22. Andy Sorensen, who is our uh, Vikings fan, that is an occasional caller. Um, I, I just have to address this now. <laughs> He's a lunatic. Um, he said something to me the other day. I, I got to pull this up. This, this was, was uh, insane. I can't believe this guy said this. He said to me, uh, I sent him a, uh, he sent me a video of um, Derek Carr saying something in a post game conference. And it was like, it was, it was a pretty good, like, inspirational clip. So I made a joke, and I said, yeah, maybe he should uh, quit the NFL and just be an inspirational speaker. He'd probably be more successful at that. <laughs> Better career move. To which Andy, Andy he responded, yeah, uh, the NFL is looking a little bleak after this weekend. Excuse me? After this weekend? Are we? Is he in Canadian? Football He's, league? I, is he watching the <laughs> arena football league? Yeah. Like, what is he wa bleak. watching? Bleak. So, TVs. so this was my response. I said, bleak, question mark, exclamation mark, question mark, exclamation mark, question mark. Emphasis on that. Josh Allen threw for, uh, he threw 20 for 31, 424 yards, four touchdowns. Then Jimmy Garoppolo, Threw 18 for 30, 253 yards, two touchdowns, and the Cowboys beat the Super Bowl champs, the Rams. So they are not looking good, dude. The Giants beat Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. And I'm going to say this because... The, the Ravens and the Bengals was a crazy game. And the Patriots... I was gonna, I, I'm only saying that because... The Patriots beat the Lions. Like... Right, and, and I'm, not even, I'm, I'm surprised. How, how is that bleak? If anything, and that the is the beat, farthest. Jets blew out the Dolphins. That is the farthest from bleak. I Andy, agree. please. Whatever crack you are smoking... <laughs> I would like to take a hit from your crack pipe because <laughs> you are on something else. It's something different, dude. It's different. And then this was his response. Well, this is how he talks, by the way. Well, I was more referring to a lot of the teams people were expecting to perform this year that are not the Chargers, Rams, Bengals, Packers, Broncos. I said, that's what makes it the opposite of bleak. That's what makes it exciting. Things that you expect are not happening. The mm -hmm. unexpected is happening. If that is bleak, you don't have a right to speak on the NFL today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, Ever, If you don't think that seeing teams that nobody expected to win, that nobody expected to do well, pop off and do incredibly well, you have no right to speak on the NFL ever. If that's what you think is bleak, you don't know. You don't know anything. You don't know anything. Amen. Go hard on that mother paint. Go hard on that paint, huh, Adam? And then he started talking about Kirk Cousins. 
Yeah, Kirk Cousins went 32 for 41, almost 80% completion percentage for 296 yards. I said, so don't say the NFL is bleak. Right. Because nobody expected <clears throat> Kirk Cousins to play well this year. And guess what? No. Somehow, somehow by the grace of God, somehow through divine intervention, somehow through some weird prophecy or some weird freaking, I don't know, some curse that someone put on everybody that hates the Vikings. Kirk Cousins is playing well for the first time since when? Since when? Chris, when was the last time you remember Kirk Cousins playing well? Well, since the last time they went to the... Uh, yeah, they beat the Saints. When Super Bowl? They when they went the to, or were they in the playoffs? Yeah. Yeah, that was, what, four or five years ago? Yeah, I the think it was five years ago. It was when yeah. I was in college f- freshman year, which would have been four years ago. 2018? Yeah. Yeah. Two th- 2018. Yeah. So that's my, January, my quick rant. January 14th, 2018. Yep. That's that's my quick rant on that. Um, but the Vikings did end up winning. Then we have the uh, the Titans and Commanders. Very 21 to 17. The Titans pulled out a W. Good for them. What did, what did you see in that game, Chris, that you liked or that maybe surprised you. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. What surprised me was that the Cowboys, or not the Cowboys, the Commanders actually kind of played decently. Commanders play, played actually very well. And I want to mention uh, the um, Donami Brown coming in, um, former, former Tar Heel filling in for yeah. Jahan Dotson. Had Tar a big heels. game. We know Tar Austin heels, loves baby. his Tar Heels. Yeah, me and him. Um, yeah. yeah, my sister lives in uh, North in, in Raleigh, so not far from okay. Chapel Hill. Um, so I, I always, whenever I go down there and visit, it's either uh, you have. It, it's honestly funny because you have. It's either uh, Duke obviously, or you you have UNC, you have Duke, and then you have Wake Forest. Well, not even, but I'm saying like when it comes to the that, rivalry. Oh, okay. You UNC and Duke, and then there's NC State that always feels like they think they have a, a rivalry with UNC, but UNC is like, they no. They don't. There's no rivalry at all whatsoever. It's it's nope. hilarious. With, with them. Maybe baseball, that's about it. But look, I, like, I love baseball, but let's be honest, who actually watches college baseball? I, I do a little bit. <laughs> but, but you know what I'm but, you know, so do I. So do I. But like in the grand scheme, grand scheme of yeah. life, like aside from you and I, Chris, who else do you know that watches college baseball? I don't know anybody that watches college baseball. Exactly. So no, no, like it's it's basketball and football for the most part from large colleges, and that's what your rivalries are. Yep. So I mean, there's going to be rivalries within sport, but in the broad sp- scheme of things, who actually cares? Seahawks and the Saints, what a game! I um, Chris Olave got the man's dirty. Oh, boy, he got, that was he a got scary moment. Out. That was a scary moment right there. He got knocked out. He, yeah, so he he completely went numb and got knocked out. Yeah, went Gumby on him. Yeah, folded. But then he it, he he still scored the touchdown. Yeah. Uh, you love to see it. You love to see the commitment. Um, As a rookie, too. I was, I was a little sad to see my boy Geno Smith lose, though. Geno Smith didn't look that bad either, though. No, he looked good. Right. No, he looked good. Right. I, I don't think Kenneth Wa- Kenny Walker with the sixty-nine yard scamper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, like I can't say either team looked bad because they both played well. Like there was nothing. Yeah. Like it was, it was a, a one touchdown win. And right. I was, you know, I, I can't say anything negative about either team. I thought they both played their hearts out, and I think that's what resulted in a one touchdown win. Like you, you have to see it. Let's not forget it was it was the Taysom Hill show. Yeah, and I benched him, dude. If you really imagine you didn't bench show. him, how much you would have won by? I probably would have had. 
He probably would have had over 1,500 points. Probably. Yeah, like 1,600. That's crazy. He, That's crazy. He got me. He would have. What would he would have had you? Let's see here. While well, he's pulling that up, um, I just want to introduce this. The 49ers beat the Panthers. And boy, oh boy, good was fashion. Jimmy G looking like the top G. <laughs> I'm sick of Trey Lance already. Well, Trey Lance is about. not coming back this season. No, I know. So That's why I'm can sick, be of him sick of because him because the 49ers should have started Jimmy G. I actually agree with that 100% because right. I never understood why it was they were playing. I mean, Jimmy Lance G over. has experience. And he also He's took them here. to the playoffs like the last, what, three years? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that was a very, like, Dumb move. he didn't get them a, t- a, a Super Bowl win, but. He took them to the playoffs. Is that not enough? Like, but then you then you start this this um, rookie one year, you know, and he didn't do. I mean, he, yeah, he didn't live up to the hype. He did not. Yeah, and I'm honestly, to be honest, I don't think I'm gonna be honest. I don't think the Packers would be or not the Packers. The 49ers would be in the record they are right now if. Trey Lance was still playing. Like it's almost I agree. a it's almost a godsend that he got injured. As messed up as that sounds, like that's how I feel. What do you what are your thoughts on that, Chris? Um, I really think that the 49ers really came to their senses. I think it was a, a good push in the right direction for them to really open up the franchise's eyes, know that Trey Lance wasn't capable of going in there and bringing him to the playoffs his first year it just wasn't going to happen so i don't know what they were thinking um so it was god sent for this to happen and for jimmy g to come back in and really put them back on the right track so yeah they look good i mean i think i said in episode one that i didn't feel like trey lance was the guy he wasn't ready i don't i don't think he was at all no no i agree with that christopher he's definitely and uh, a lot Not of these ready. mobile quarterbacks come in and get put on the spot, and they do outshine a lot of these veterans, but because they're mobile, and that's why. And but let's be honest here: a lot of the mobile quarterbacks, they're not able to bring their teams to playoffs and, or win playoffs. Right. Look at I Lamar mean, you, Jackson. I was right. just gonna say Lamar that. Jackson. Look at Lamar Jackson. No, 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 no. I, I Look totally at Lamar disagree. Lamar Jackson. He shows up in the. They go to the playoffs every year, but what happens? They don't win. They, they choke in the playoffs. Yes. Yeah, and why do you, why do you disagree? No, no, I I thought you were starting saying something bad about Lamar Jackson about. Oh no, he's he's definitely well, a great no. quarterback, but there's only there's only running will get you so only far. so far so far. Right. Yeah, and then I mean, he's Lamar Jackson bring bring what the Ravens to what three consecutive playoffs, but they choke. Yeah, and 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 big uh big games. <laughs> If you don't have a completion rate and move over over sixty to sixty five percent, the chances of you winning in a playoff game are slim to none. Did you find out what Yes. Taysom Hill got me hundred and seventy five points. That you didn't use. And George Kittle. <laughs> I had started George Kittle. And what did he get you? Fifty four. Oh, so twenty more than the last two weeks. Hey. That's I'll, I'll that's take it. hey. If you grow one percent but every single week. day, or in their case, every single week. That's growth, nonetheless. Yeah. This so. week I'm putting um, Taysom Hill at Flex. Who are they playing? Uh, Cincinnati. Oh, You're going to trust oh. him to repeat? Oh. Dang. Okay. All right. Yeah. I we got, had uh, well, Only because Josh Jacobs has a bye. The Raiders have a bye week, so yeah. Let's. We yeah. had uh, the Eagles taking on the Cardinals. A classic Five and a, oh. a classic battle of the birds. Honestly, I didn't think the Eagles were going to win that game. Five and but oh. I'm going to be honest here. I think that in a sense, the Cardinals were destined to lose that game because <laughs> of the way Kyler Murray showed up. <laughs> This man was wearing a lime green suit 
Which, for the record, the pants that he was wearing looked like they were his father's because they were bell bottoms, man. They were they, but they weren't true bell bottoms. Like they just looked like bell bottoms. That's all that needs to happen for them they, to, for them to lose that game. But they did, yeah. <laughs> that outfit was enough for them to lose that game. Did you guys actually see what Antonio Brown posted on Twitter? Did not see. This is this is actually crazy. I gotta pull this up. So Antonio Brown posted this this like picture. Pool, right? No, this is crazy. Look at this, Austin. It says, starting my own team, sign up. And it's a picture of, like, a modified cardinal. cardinal and it says, the retardinals. That's, that's low for him. Dude, well, he, honestly, honestly they, I, don't, I, don't, I don't expect anything He's else. going crazy. Well, let me say this about Antonio Brown. This dude walking around with his, with his knee-high boots on, like it's wintertime. His mud his boots. Jacket. Wintertime. Bro, we don't care if you're Kanye fashion or not. You got no right to be judging Kyler Murray walking in, looking like Scooby Doo, you know, <laughs> Freddy or Shaggy. Whatever. It looked like a mix of <laughs> Freddy and Shaggy for sure. Right. Yeah. Oh man. But either way, either way. No, like, I, I have. I just think that's like, like what's what's wrong with you? No, dude? that's like, low. That's low. It's kind low. of. It's like why? Like you're not in the NFL. Not a single team wants you. Not because you're not a good player. You are. But you have such a bad attitude. Mm -hmm. You have such a disrespect for every single organization you've been a part of. Yep. You don't know what it's like to be on a team because guess what? You would be a good fit on the retardinals because you think team is spelt with an I in it. But guess what? It's not about you, AB. It's really, it never has been. And Take your winter jacket and your mud boots and go work on a farm. Oh, wait, you can't because that would mean you had to do something. You'd have to do some work and you don't know what that's like. So, Agreed. yeah, I just think it's really. I, anyway. think, I just think as a um, NFL wide receiver or even anybody in the NFL posting that, you know, just that word retard. Is low. For, it's disrespectful. Yeah, it's like, it dude, is. like, yeah, like, yeah. I, he's gonna lose a lot of fans because he's, of that. He's really gone off the deep end, and it's kind of sad. It's like someone who could be a really good player, but let his ego get the best of him. It's like LeBron James, <laughs> Jabron Limes. <laughs> but actually, so back to the Kyler Murray outfit. I have to say this too, though, like. His outfit was so terrible, and that caused the Cardinals to lose, I believe. But in the same respect, we just talked about the 49ers destroying the Panthers. I think it's because of the way Jimmy G walked in. He looked like John Wick. Like, this man had, like, a black it's like he's a, a black he's leather a boss, suit man. with, like, a black shirt, black shoes. He just looked like he was licensed to kill. Like, this guy looked like he was starring the next John Wick, James Bond, like, James Bond. Mission Impossible. James Bond. The name's Bond. James Bond. Jimmy Bond. Le J Jimmy Bond. Yeah, it's still. I gotta give you that. I gotta give you that. <laughs> but he looked like he had a license to kill, and that's what he did. Anyway. Um, Bengals and Ravens. The Ravens. Not much to say about this game. You don't or you do? Not much to say. Not much to say. It was a close Justin, game. Oh, you got to say, Justin Tucker. Yeah. <laughs> Justin Tucker, man. Count on him to win a game for you. Two good teams battled it out. It was a very close game. Um, I think I had the Bengals winning that game. Unfortunately, they didn't. Regardless, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a good game to watch. It was very yeah. competitive. It was, it, was good. it was back and forth, back and forth. Both defenses played well. Both offenses played well. Both I quarterbacks think they're in the same well. division, too. Yeah. It is safe to say Justin Tucker is the greatest picker of all time. Yeah, that game came down to him. And all right, come on easily, now, Christopher. Easily. Well, who do you think it is? Adam Vinatieri. Absolutely not. Are you kidding me? I love – I listen to me. Uh, you know I love Adam Vinatieri. But Justin Tucker is 17 for 17 in the final minute of regulation in his career. 
and it has made 61 consecutive field goals in the fourth quarter in OT. He's good. You know who yeah. else I think is going to be one of the, um, the, the, like, he started his career off um, super well, and I think that he's going to maybe be at that level in a few years. Let I think the Bengals kicker. McPherson. I, Shooter McPherson, McPherson, dude. I think yeah. he's Shooter. Like he's yeah. He's already good. And I think yeah, that he if he keeps at the pace he's at, he's going to be one of the greatest kickers to play the game. And that's not something when you talk about the NFL, you don't really talk about much, which is kind of it's kind of I feel bad for kickers in a sense because they do like there's a lot of games that come down to them. Like they are the guy to make or break a win. And so I they're they're, they're put on the spot a lot. Do you like, do kickers go into the Hall of Fame? Like, I don't really hear about it. Oh, yeah, of course they do. Yeah, Christopher would know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I looked at you, you looked at me, and I said, I'm just waiting for Christopher yeah. to say something. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we, a lot of guys talk about, you know, kickers like George Blanda. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, of course. that's true. Or that's George true. Blanda, you know. He's, he's, one of the, he's also one of the greatest kickers of all time. And I feel bad for the linemen too. David Akers. You know, um, kids are coming up, and you know they're looking at Tom Brady, Lamar Jackson. It is tough you know, when they don't they don't give any. It is it is kind of tough because you have to think about it like this: like when people go watch football or go to a game, what do they want to see? Right. Most right. of the time, they want to see an epic throw, an epic catch, epic an run. epic run. Uh, there's not the enough love to do, de- but I mean, I know Behind you, all that. I know you and I both love to watch a good sack, right? Love to go, but you know, watch pancakes. Yeah. Oh, what they don't want to watch is a last second field goal to win the game or yeah. to lose the game because it's stressful. Nobody, nobody likes but seeing I, that. I kind of like when it comes down to that because it's like you really. I, I well, not when the it's the Giants. When not when it's the Giants. But when it's another thing, it's like, ooh. If it's a team that I don't care if they win or lose, the Saints or... I'm like, ooh. <laughs> what's going to happen here? Are they going to they gonna win it? Are they going to lose it? What Like, you know, what's going to happen? So it's very – it's intriguing to me because I can only imagine the stress that that, that those guys go through. Right. Like, um, yeah. So, yeah, like I think – I, I enjoy watching it come down to like a kicking duel, essentially, sometimes. Like a uh, sudden death. Because yeah, uh, dude, I I well I've said this. Yeah, I yeah. think I think after overtime in regular season, instead of tying the game, because no game should end in a tie. Right. I it think should. they do. They, they they do a kicking shootout. You start at yeah, the twenty-five. 30, yeah, twenty-five. Go to the thirty. Just thirty-five. Like, just like hockey, soccer. Yeah, you start it's it's a shootout and then whoever misses first or you know whatever. I think that would be really cool and I think it would kind of give um those kickers a little bit more of a showcase if it came down to that. But Yeah, definitely. Those are just my my personal thoughts on that. Then we had uh the last game which was Monday night. The Chiefs beat the Raiders by one, by point. one point. And honestly, Can I talk about Devontae Adams real quick. You know, I, this man walked to the locker room and shoved a cameraman on purpose. Do we have the video or no? I can. I'll put the video in here. But um, it wasn't that was great. Not no. That was not. And then cool. he made like this apology where he's like, "I'm sorry to him. Why are you apologizing to a reporter? Go apologize to the guy. Like he was just there to do his job, just like you were." Right. And because you weren't grown enough to take your feelings and put them into consideration for yourself, like or your team, you, for that point. okay, let me put this. I work with a guy. Um, he works with me. His name is Joe Sykes. He, well, his first name is Trumaine Sykes. He actually goes by Joe. He played in the NFL for two years. This is actually really cool. He played for the, at that time, the Redskins. Um, and then he did, uh, a couple years in the CFL and then played in the Arena Football League, um, which brought him to where I am in Albany. Um, he played for Albany Empire. Yep. Um, so he he I was talking to him about this. We talk a lot about football. Eventually, I'm going to have him as a guest because he 
he knows a lot about the game because he played it. Right. Um, but we were talking Probably about been around it too. A lot. Yeah. So we were talking about this today, and he's like, "That's just like ridiculous. Like everybody gets upset. Like everybody has a has a bad game, but at the end of the day, like you got to take that with yourself." Like, you can't take it out on a guy who's literally just there to do his job. Right. Like, yeah. grow up, dude. You're not in high school, okay? You're not in middle school. Like, you can't take your anger out on someone. Are you trying to be a bully? Like, because Everybody Antonio Brown's off the scene, you want to be the bully? Yeah. Yep. It's just... But a lot closer of a game than I thought it was <clears> going to yeah. be. And it really... That uh, third and one call... What did you What did you think of... Did you watch the game last night, Christopher? I did a little bit of it, yes. Did you watch the last, like, few minutes? No. Okay. Did you watch it? No, I did not. <sighs> so you guys aren't going to understand what I'm talking about. There was a call on third and one with, like, 50 seconds left. He passed it to Devontae Adams. And... Oh, I saw that. I saw it. I, I, I did watch the highlights. What did, you, though, what did you think about that? Um, why, why go for it all? When you just got to run the ball. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Right? Um, I think that it was dumb. Like, it was one yard. You had, you had 50 seconds left on the clock. You gave that 50 seconds to the Chiefs. Yeah. And then when it was fourth and one, that was just a mess. Two of the players collided into each other. And, yep. uh, it, yeah, I was, I was like. Hunter run throw I, and Devonta Adams collided into each other. Yeah, it was it was yeah. kind of it was like it was just embarrassing. I was like, "What do you guys do?" Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. unreal. So that uh, is the uh, that's the the week five uh, recap. Let's just talk briefly. There's a couple things I just wanted to talk about. Um, number one, the Browns are trading for the Falcons linebacker Dion Jones. That's crazy to me. Yeah, that's um, that's gonna be a big loss for 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 Atlanta. They literally and a really nobody. nice addition for Cleveland. Yeah, um, it's, I yeah, I was kind of shocked when I saw that. Uh, something I wasn't shocked about though was that it says this on the NFL Instagram that the Panthers part ways with head coach Matt Rule. They didn't part ways. He got fired. Um we'll call it we'll call it what it is. Uh yeah. the Panthers have clearly not played well at all this season. No. And their coach has been fired. Um See not shocked later. by that at all. Um I think it was really just waiting to happen. Yep. Um, that might be one of the that might be one of the quickest fires I've ever come across. Uh, like, we're yeah, in, we're, was, we're in week five and this dude's already fired. Yeah, um, it's I think it was just wait, waiting to happen to be honest. Yeah, I think they're already on edge <laughs> I, about it coming into the season. Yeah, I, let's talk about the uh, Patriots uniforms. We. Uh, I love that they brought them back. Yeah, we we talked a little bit about them at the beginning, but they were crazy. They were crazy. They were. You love when they bring back the classic uniform. Yep. Um, it's always a good yeah. look. It's always yep. classy, and that could be the reason I they won the game. I love the red too, and the, the red with the white helmet. It really. Yeah. Is, yeah. yeah. Patriots uniforms were crazy. You were oh, crazy. Yeah. You know what else were crazy? There were some uh there were some special cleats for Latin Heritage Month uh that were pretty sick. Lawrence had some some special cleats that were honoring not his own but his wife's heritage. I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Like obviously it's Latin Latin Latin. I can't speak tonight. Latin Heritage Month, but he's not of Latin heritage. Right. But he said, you know what? My wife is, and that's close to me, so I'm gonna honor her. On my stage, oh, nice. and they were pretty cool cleats too. Like, they were pretty sick. I uh, I thought they were pretty sick. Oh yeah. Um, a couple more. There were only a few worth it fit checks this week. One of them, Cleveland Browns, 
Steven the Joker just looked like he just he, just a ball. He mauled a bear himself. Yeah, I think he killed. Skinned it. He killed some animal yeah. and threw its fur on his back, and <laughs> it looked good. Oh, it yeah. looked tough. I I have a jacket kind of like that. I want it. Um, I, I want that. Yeah, it's it's then go m- kill a bear. I'm gonna right now. <laughs> then we ha- then we had uh, uh, the last one. Chubba Hubbard. He looks like an idiot. He looked like. Uh, 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 your grandmother's quilt, but imagine wearing it. That's what it looked like. Uh, just a couple random <laughs> patches a, of different. One. You know, what I'm saying? Your like, grandmother's quilt. Like it's just a <laughs> bunch of patches of randomness, and it's a quilt. Like you know, but more power to him. And then, did you guys see the ultimate Philly fan this weekend? I... Oh, I think so. You didn't, Chris? I try not to. Pay attention to all Philly fans, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this guy was tatted up with Here's everything Philadelphia. Right yeah, let me let me look at this. Like this <laughs> guy, guy, he had Is he everything. Belly? Yeah, yeah, dude, it was crazy. Like he had look every sports hole. team, every mascot, we the people. You know, Irish pride. This guy was, first of all, he has a disgusting body. Like, I guess if you are built like that and you are that gross, you might as well put tattoos over it to to distract it in some effort. But I just loved how he has, like, the Phillies mascot on his belly button. And, like, it's got that. The Phillies mascot is like an alien. It's got it right in the perfect. It's right in the perfect uh, belly button hole. So, belly button. (laughs) Belly button hole. (laughs) But honestly, that's the reason the the Philly fans are five and zero. Yeah, I that think Philly's it's safe to say that he's an Eagles fan or a Philadelphia fan. He's hardcore, yeah. hardcore. He's hardcore. Yeah, he's hardcore on a Sesame Street too. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> well, that's scary. Actually. Didn't have to disrespect him like that. Didn't have to disrespect him like that. All right. Real quick, let's wrap it up. Let's give our our score predictions. I'm gonna. We're just going to – not even score predictions, just who's going to win. Um, we have uh, week six. It starts off on Thursday night. I don't know under – I don't under – actually, before we do that, players of the week. Yes. Let me do this real quick. I'm just going to say my player of the week. I think it's pretty clear because I've talked about it a couple times. My player of the week is Josh Allen. 20 for 31, 424 yards – Four touchdowns. That is why he is my player of the week. And Chris, what did you say his QB rating was? Like 130 something? 134.1. That's crazy. That's that crazy. is yeah, that's extreme. Your player of the week, Austin? Austin Eckler. Same name. The guy. 16 carries for 173 yards. His average is first down every carry, so it's 10.8. Uh, you got one touchdown, four receiving um, receptions. Against but, I mean, Cleveland's he's... defense. Huh? Against Cleveland's defense, too. So. Right. Know. It's not too bad. They're yeah. no slouch. All right. So let's get into real quick. We're going to do our, our recap uh, of week six. We're going to see who's going to win. Speed round. Commanders at Bears. Chris, who are you taking? I'm taking the... Um... I'm going to the Bears on this one. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go Bears as well. Yep. Okay. All Bears here. Ravens and Giants. I have to keep it with the Giants. I think it's going to be a good game, but I have to go with the Giants because I think they're going to rally. I don't know. I think this, I think this is a make or break here. I'm betting on Giants this week. So Let's go. Let's go. What do you think, Austin? Come on, this He's is speed Ravens. round. I, oh, He's going Giants. Ravens. What are you talking about? Giants. Giants. We got Giants. Jaguars Ooh. and Colts. Uh, Jaguars. Oh, yeah. Chris? Jaguars and who? Colts. Yeah, I'm definitely going Jaguars on that. All right. Then we got the Patriots and Browns. I'm going to go Patriots. Yeah. I know your answer, Chris. Yeah, I'm going Pats. All right, Bengals and Saints. I'm going to go Bengals, yeah, Chris. Yeah. I'm going Bengals. All yeah. right, everybody's going Bengals. 
Buccaneers and uh, Steelers. Buccaneers. Bucks. Wait, didn't they yeah, just? Bark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 49ers and Falcon Falcons. 49ers. Yeah. Jimmy yeah, Niners. Yeah. Yeah. Jets. Jets and Packers. I'm going Jets. Out honestly, I'm I'm sick of the Packers, dude. I love Aaron Rodgers, but I think he's retired. Yeah. 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 Jets. Vikings and Dolphins. Um, just for the sake of Andy Sorensen, I hope the Vikings lose, and I hope Kirk Cousin goes out with a torn ACL, maybe a broken wrist, maybe a broken neck. I don't know. It's not for me to decide. It's for the Lord to decide, and the Lord will have His wrath on Kirk Cousins. Therefore, I'm going the Dolphins. Wow. Yeah, I'll go Dolphins. No, I'm, well, actually, no, I'm going Vikings. I think the Vikings are going to be playoff contenders this year, so I'm going Vikings. Wow, I wish she never said that. All right. Uh, Sorry. Rams and Panthers. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Rams, even though they're terrible this year. Yeah, definitely Rams. All right. Uh, Seahawks and Cardinals. Seahawks, I think. Yeah, I'll go with Seahawks here. Then we have the... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I'm going to go Seattle as well. Cool, 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 cool. All right, then we have the Bills and Chiefs. I'm going with my man, Josh Allen, because I'm... You know it. Say it with me. I am so sick of of Patty Mahomes. Mahomes. That's right. So I'm going with the Bills. Yeah, I'm going Bills. Mafia. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm going Eagles here. Eagles and Cowboys. I'm going Eagles too. Keep it rolling, man. Yep. Mark my words. He's going Be careful Cowboys. with this one. Be He's careful with this game. He be said careful be careful with this game right here. I'm telling you right now, be careful. We're, we're, we're careful. This game's going to surprise a lot of people. I hope it does. I hope it does. Because I'm going Cowboys on this one. I'm going boys on this one. That's a little bit controversy. I got to go opposite one game of all all you guys. Fair enough. Fair enough. game I'm going to take. Yeah, fair enough. And last game. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Last game is the Broncos and the Chargers. I got to go with the Chargers. Yeah. I got it. I think just like ninety five percent of America go <laughs> Dude, like I said, Russell Wilson is out there selling cars with uh Dak Prescott, um and, Andrew Luck and Andrew Luck and Alex Smith, <laughs> all the terrible first round picks. But um yeah, so that is our, our recap next week. Anything else you guys wanna mention before we sign off? Chris, is there anything you wanna mention? We're good. All right. Oh, yeah. Austin, you set? Yep. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks as always for watching the Penford Sports Channel. Well, Penford, Penford Sports Podcast on the Penford Media Channel. Uh, you can catch us here next week, oh, yeah. same time, uh, to discuss all things the NFL. If you have not already, please subscribe. Turn your notifications on. You want to be notified when we're posting a video because we have the most wild takes on the NFL maybe the most accurate takes and we keep you up to date. So follow us on Facebook Penford media or not Facebook. Yeah. Facebook Penford media, Instagram, Penford sports. Don't forget to hit that like button. Yeah. YouTube Penford media, uh, Facebook. I think I ruined it. I think it's Penford sports. I'm tired. I've had a long day of work, but (laughs) with that, as always, I have been your host, as is Austin, and we are signing out.